What's going on guys, Brad here. In this video, I'll walk you through how to use Room EQ Wizard and your measurement microphone, be it a U-Mic 1 or whatever you have, to level match your speakers using REW's built-in tone generator and SPL meter. Now before we really dive into this video and get started, if you're brand new to Room EQ Wizard, maybe you haven't used it before at all, then I highly suggest checking out this video in the card above. Essentially, I walk you through downloading and installing both Room EQ Wizard and ASI Overall, so you can get all set up and everything to follow along with this guide because I'm not really gonna walk you through how to set that stuff up in this video. I will go over my settings and everything so we're all on the same page, but if you're not familiar with Room EQ Wizard at all, then definitely check out that video first. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell icon so you never miss out on any new uploads. Also, I'll have links to the UMic 1 that I'm using down in the description below, along with some other cool things like links to my full home theater setup. All right, so I have REW opened up here and we'll run through the settings on both REW and my receiver really quick. So we'll start off with the receiver and I'll just go in here and you wanna make sure that your overall levels are all at zero dB. You'll see that that's what they are here. Now for REW, I'm going to go into my preferences and basically I want to make sure that ASIO is selected and ASIO for all V2 is selected as well. And then just leave it on high definition audio one. We have our U mic as our input device. And then under Cal files, I have my 90 degree files loaded up. Now I am using the beta version of Rumi Q wizard for this, but if you just have the standard non beta version, you still be able to follow along with this guide. It just won't have all of these these menu items here and the tone generator will look a little different, but it's relatively the same thing. So I'll exit out of here and then I'm gonna come over to generator, but I'm not gonna actually do anything just yet. What I wanna do here is the way I like to set things up is I like to raise the volume control on my receiver to zero dB. This is basically reference volume. I never listen at this volume because it's incredibly loud, but this gives me a good reference point. So basically I want my speakers when I'm at zero dB playing these test tones to play back at 75 decibels. Same with the subwoofer. In order to do that, minus 12 dB FS is way too loud. Again, this is kind of personal preference, but it's how I like to set it up because I like to know that zero dB is my reference volume and I can reduce the volume down from that. But what I do here is we need to set this to minus 30. And setting it to minus 30 will ensure that at zero dB, that's what should read 75 decibels. It's a little more complicated than that. I won't go into why, but I will say that if you've been into home theater for a while and you've used test discs from like Avia or Digital Video Essentials, then they are actually mastered. The test tones on those discs are actually mastered at minus 30 dB FS. I'm gonna go ahead and click on speaker cal, but before we go play this, a little word of warning. So I've turned my volume up on my receiver to zero dB as you can see there. What's gonna happen is if you're doing this and then you wanna take measurements, when you go to click measure, you'll notice that the level here is still set to minus 12. That means that if your receiver's still at zero, and trust me, I've made this mistake before, you're gonna hit that start button and it's gonna blast you with sound and potentially damage your speakers. Normally, you'd be okay, but I'd rather not chance it. So I go ahead, before I even do anything else, I go ahead and set this to minus 30 because I'll probably forget and go to take a measurement and then get blasted with sound or maybe damage something or scare the cat that we have to death, and I don't wanna do that. So come in here, set that, we can hit cancel, and now we can go back to the tone generator. Now we can go ahead and set things up. So under the tone generator, you wanna make sure that noise is selected, pink random, and then speaker cal. Now, if you're on the basic REW version, this is gonna look a little different. You want pink PN noise selected and our output is set to high definition audio one. That's our left channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the SPL meter. It'll start displaying that right away. And then we just wanna make sure that SPL is selected here. C weighting is selected and S for slow is selected. That's just gonna make it a little easier to read this and it won't kind of fluctuate up and down. So basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit the play button. I'm gonna go into my receiver. I'm gonna go under speakers and under manual setup. I'm gonna go down to levels. And before I hit test tone start, I'm gonna go ahead and play this. Now this kind of requires a little back and forth because you'll notice if I hit test tone start, 
we get the receiver's internal test tone. So it's gonna have to go back and forth. So we'll we'll hit play here. We'll kind of look at the reading, go into the test tone start, adjust that level, and then back out of it so we can hear what REW is doing again and basically do that over and over again. What you wanna make sure of first though is you wanna make sure that any type of surround up mixing is turned off. We just want multi-channel in. We don't want Dolby surround or Neural X or anything like that. We just want multi-channel in. We don't want the receiver doing anything else. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'll go back to my levels. With that up, I'll go ahead and hit play. It's gonna come out of the left front channel and you'll see me kind of go back and forth here. All right, so I'm hovering around 71, 72. You'll see it go up because I'm talking. But I'll go in here and we'll bring that up to about two. Okay, so as you saw, I kind of had to go back and forth a little bit, which is fine. Essentially, I got it to where it's hovering around 74, 75. Honestly though, if you're half a decibel off here or there, you're not really gonna be able to notice with your ears. We're gonna basically run through and do the same thing with the right channel. So I'll go ahead and select High Definition Audio 2. I'll hit play here. It's gonna play out of the right channel and I'm gonna basically do the same thing. I won't talk this time though. I'll just go through the process. All right, so I adjusted the right channel there, and as you saw, I had to bring it up about another decibel above what the left channel was, and there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, I have some things in front of that area or around there in order to record stuff off the screen so you can see when I access a receiver. It could be that, or it could be that because I have Odyssey enabled, and it might not be like for like for the le with the left channel between that 500 to 2000 hertz range. I'm gonna go ahead and do everything else off screen just by going through our little drop down menu here. Audio three is our center. Audio four is our subwoofer, uh, which we don't really need, uh, which I'll explain why in a second. I'll set that up at the end. And then audio five and six, seven and eight are all our surround speakers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those and I'll come right back. All right, so I've level matched all my speakers and I'll just bring this up real quick to show you what I got. Fit it up with plus three on the front left, plus 0.5 on the center, plus four on the front right, five on the surround right, and 5.5 on the surround left. Sorry, it was a little loud there. The left surround is right here. Now you notice I didn't do the Atmos speakers and that's because unfortunately, REW doesn't allow you to control or have access to those Atmos speakers. So what can we do to level match those? We can basically use the internal test tones. And the reason that's not ideal is because when we use the internal test tones, it typically disables any type of EQ or room correction that you've done in your receiver. So YPAO, Dirac Live, Odyssey. That's something we typically don't want to do because it might correct things and we might actually end up bringing the level down too much or too high. Something to keep in mind, but for Atmos speakers, we really don't have another option if we want to do this manually. In order to do that, we'll move the SPL meter down so we can actually see it. We'll hit test tone start. We'll go ahead and look at what the front left channel is and we'll go from there. All right, so the front left is reading about 73, 74 dB. So I'm gonna come down to the top middle right. And we'll boost that up until it kind of reads the same level. We're good to go there. And we'll do the same thing on the top middle left. All right, so I've level matched those. You notice I had to boost the one on the left here a little more than the one on the right, and that's because I have a vaulted ceiling. So the ceiling kind of slopes this way. It's like starts down here and goes up that way. So there's a bit of a difference in terms of height from the left and the right. I've tried to bring this one down a little bit with some attachments, but it's still not ideal. So now we've level matched all the speakers. All we need to do is a level match the sub. What we can do is we're back in REW here. I still have my receiver stuff pulled up because we're gonna need to go in there. We're just gonna use the front left channel instead of the dedicated subwoofer 
channel here because that one's a little hot. It's harder to set in my opinion, doing it that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to high definition audio one, which is our front left channel. Instead of speaker cow, we're gonna select sub cow. And then basically we're gonna hit play and we're gonna adjust the subwoofer overall volume level until it reads about the same as the front. If you don't have enough volume, then you wanna first adjust the overall volume on the subwoofer itself. So the gain knob on the subwoofer, you wanna turn that up. If you're playing this and it's down in like the 60s or whatever, you're not really getting much. And so basically we're gonna try to set it around 75 dB. So we'll hit the play button and we'll kind of go back and forth just like we did with our speaker settings. So, okay, as you can see, it's, it's a little hot here. So I'm gonna go in and bring it down by about three decibels. So I level match the subwoofer to all the other speakers. So now they're all reading 75 dB, but you may want to boost the subwoofer a little bit in order to get a little extra bass output, especially if you, you know, lower the volume level, which you, you are because this is going to be super loud. So before you play something, don't forget to bring the volume level down on that. But you can boost the subwoofer by, you know, three to four decibels if you'd like. I would suggest trying both ways, trying setting it to 75 dB where it kind of reads that and listening to it for a little bit. And then, you know, maybe adding 3 dB and see if you like that more. You know, it just really play around with it and see which one you prefer. All right, so there you go. We've level matched all of our speakers and subwoofers so they're playing the same volume level. And like I mentioned, you may wanna boost the subwoofer uh, three or four decibels if you want a little more bass. I mean, who doesn't love a little more bass, especially if you're listening at lower volume levels. You might need that little extra boost. But now your system should sound super balanced and you know, your left surround and your, your Atmos speakers aren't producing way louder sound than all your other speakers and you know, being really distracting. It should just be a nice, full, balanced mix. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up as it helps this video reach more people. Also, if you've level met your speakers and you don't like how it sounds or you just prefer letting Odyssey do everything for you, that's okay. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, if you have any more tips or tricks that I maybe didn't cover in this video because I'm human and forget things, leave a comment down below too because I can pin it and other people could see it. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.